All right, this one is called Someone is Wrong on the Internet by Jay Wilburn. Glinda Glimp Connor burst into the Internet Cafe right across from the modern art outside the convention center. The place was packed. This had to be the most business an Internet Cafe had seen since the early 2000s. Let's say an Internet Cafe in the United States had seen since the early 2000s. She realized she was still wearing her Zen line staff pass. With what she was here to do, she might not want to advertise her employer. She slipped the plastic rectangle and lanyard under her pullover. Then it was time to find the bastard. She weaved between the tables that were obviously new, but made to look rustic as if the place in the middle of the city had just gone and chopped some raw edge wood for their tabletops. When the jerk posted a picture of okay let me do a new paragraph here when that jerk had posted a picture of where he was right after all that stuff he said about her father she recognized the tables the blurred images of the modern art outside and the reflection of the cafe's name in the window she was in full stalker mode but she try she was tired of all these lies and terrible jokes told about her late father by cowards behind a keyboard uh, she was in full stalker mode and knew it. And knew it was crazy. Okay, let's say that. All right. Um, she was all for Me Too and every other empowerment movement, but her father was a lovely and loving man who lived for her until he died when she was five. Uh, he got... Uh, he got, she got, okay, here we are. She got the right, ain't, let's say she got the correct angle. She got the correct angle to recreate that picture. Let's say that posted picture. Identified the window and recognized the furry, dirty little man in his stocking cap looking like he could be homeless or in style. He must have worn that stupid cap all the time because it was the same one in his profile picture. She moved diagonally through the packed tables and approached him from behind. Glinda missed her mom. Her dad... Let me put a, fix a typo here. That's what editing is for. <laughs> Her dad had been 80 when he was when she was born, and Mom was exactly half his age at the time. They were very much in love. Glinda had six other half-siblings from almost as many women. Some of them were older than her mom. She never spoke to any of them, and they never called her, called her dad while he was still alive those few years she had. She had, let's say she had with him. All right. Mom had died less than 10 years ago from cancer, so she didn't have to see or hear all these lies. Glinda missed them both like it was yesterday. Let's say so at least. At least she didn't have to see and hear all these lies. The jerk leaned over his phone that he held op above his keyboard. That that weapon of cowardly lies. Glinda stopped a few steps from him and clenched her teeth so tight her jaw ached. She wanted to scream, to hit, maybe even to bite, but she wanted to keep her job. So she took a few beats to steady herself. A couple more guys and one girl stopped past Glinda and engaged the jerk. She la they laughed and spoke over the top of each other with excitement. Glinda stepped back and leaned against a rough post that looked like it might have been cut and put up that very morning, or it could have held up the internet cafe for a hundred years. She took out her own phone and pretended to be looking up something or texting so she could wait for the others to leave. If he left with them, she wasn't sure if she was going to follow or not. This felt dangerous. It, felt un it, it might be unhinged. She was all raw nerve in need of an outlet. She got bored of them talking about the panels her own company had set up. Glinda actually opened her phone 
and looked over his post about her father, Alfonso Glimp Connor, as if that was going to help her keep it together. She followed a couple links. They all went to trash sites that promoted all sorts of conspiracy theories. Her father had been subjected to that his whole life. Being an actor, everyone assumed he was up to, uh, let's say being an actor in the golden age, that would be capitalized, in the golden age of movies, Everyone assumed he was up to dirty business. Every starlet that died from a drug overdose became fodder for theories about murder and cover-ups. Before the internet, there were the true crime shows. All of it was bunk. That was exactly how her father said it. Bunk was one of those words he kept over from his day and age and continued to use. She started to read the comments, but immediately regretted it. Put it in here. That was a lesson she had to relearn over and over. Alfonso Connor had been an actor working on a few Ronald Reagan movies in his early career and a few John Wayne movies in his middle career. He went on to be a producer. An, uh, I need to fix a typo there. He went on to become a producer, an independent politician on the state level, a publisher, an artist, a yoga guru later in his life. But before Glenda came in... In, later in his life, but still before Glenda came along, and by the time she knew him in her childhood, he was a gracious, kind, attentive, and thoughtful old man. All his days of fast car, excess booze, and public divorces were long over. That was the man these jerks behind their keyboards, who were never there and never knew him, would never understand. The others left and the keyboard warrior returned to slumping over his screen above a screen. This guy was the target audience for Zenline and all their awareness products and services that just worked like any other social media to keep guys like this plugged into their screens for as long as possible. She always felt a little bit of contempt for the audience they served. This guy, seeing him in person after that nasty post, he disgusted her. She saw him as something dirty, almost dripping with his filth. Glinda reached out for his back, but then drew her hand away. She shook. Tears burned her eyes before they could even well up enough to fall. She thought she might throw up. Maybe throwing up on this, this his favorite stocking cap would be all the revenge she ever needed. I hate you, she breathed out. He looked up, adjusted his glasses, and turned to face her. Did you say some? Are, are you okay? His stool squeaked back along the fake tile on the floor. More people turned toward them at, the, at that noise. Several moved, to, moved at once to brace her as her knees buckled. She could, she could still hear them all clearly even as her vision stayed black. I'm okay, I'm okay, she said, while she was still blind. The world formed back again. Most people in the, in the pack cafe were still talking and laughing among themselves. A few squatted around her as she sat leaned against leaned back against the rough-hued post. The decorative splinters hurt the back of her head. He was there, too, that lying piece of garbage. His dirty hair stuck out from under that cap he probably rarely ever took off. His round, greasy face stared into her with all the concern he did not show her father. He reminded her of those guys who live-streamed for hours upon hours in their sweaty little rooms. She showed her teeth and said, My father was a good man. He nodded. I'm sure he is. Are you feeling okay? Do you want me to call an ambulance? None of the stuff you say about him is true. He tilted his head and spoke to someone above them. I think she's confused. We might need to go ahead and call. I'm not confused about anything, she shouted. Everyone froze. The jerk said, Okay, we won't do anything you don't want. She shook her head. It was too late for that. Listen, you, she demanded. He was never in a sex cult. None of his wives were slaves. He wasn't involved in any of the children who disappeared. No sacrifices, no secret organizations. He was just a, a kind old man. All right, let me fix the typo there. He was just a kind old man who couldn't hurt anyone. The guy looked up and then squatted, squinted at her. Who are you talking about? My father was a good man. Okay, who is your father? Can I call him or someone else for you? It... Um, I don't want anything from you. I want you to shut the hell up. 
He held up his hands in surrender and stood before backing up a couple steps. Glinda fought her way to her feet. She felt weak, but a new wave of dizziness passed on its own. What you say hurts people. I don't know who you are or what you're talking about, you crazy... He looked at the he looked to the others standing around and just stood shook his head without finishing. She pointed at him as she moved toward the door. Not so easy to say mean things when others are around, is it? I don't know. He looked at the rest of the gathered strangers and appealed to them. I don't know her. I've never met her before. I don't know what she's talking about. I hate you, she cried again and moved toward the doors. The guy turned around and yelled, Someone took my computer. Hey, was this some sort of distraction? Stop her. Glinda was already out the door and crossing to the convention center again. She had no idea who took his computer, but she thought it served him right. Her father couldn't have done any of that stuff, no matter how many people said he did. Maybe losing his laptop would slow down his lies a little. One down, a billion more to go, she muttered to herself as she fished her staff pass out of her pullover to get back inside the center.